Hello, welcome to another episode of the Scientist Safe Farmer. Today I am going to be doing some calibrating on my Brillian Cedar. This one is actually a Landscape 64. It is specifically, it's a model number GLP 643. And I'm going to be putting a new type of seed through it that's not in the instruction manual. The instruction manual doesn't give uh, very many specifications for a whole lot of seed types. What I'm seeding or what I'm going to prepare to seed is uh, a pasture mix that I'm going to do some frost seeding in and it's um, a mix of ryegrass is really because the local co-op told me that ryegrass is a seed type that's really amenable to frost seeding. I'm going to be seeding it about 30 pounds per acre so it's going to need to go down pretty heavy and so what I'm going to need to do is calibrate this seeder to find out uh, what setting it needs to be on for the seed drop rate in order to get to my 30 pounds per acre. Now since this is a landscape seeder, it's typically used for seeding yards and it is going to be dropping the grass on pretty heavy anyways because uh, yard grasses are seeded pretty heavy to get a nice thick turf. That being said, there are a couple ways according to the instruction manual that you can seed or that you can calibrate this. So one of them is to attach a little seed box or something um, to uh, the bottom of the seeder and drive it 100 feet in field conditions and they give you an equation to um, use. What you would do is you would weigh out the seed that you catch in your seed box or a little tarp or something and then you would take the weight of that and apply it to the equation. So specifically, for this particular model, they say here, um, your pounds per acre would be your seed weight times 43,560 uh, divided by the width times distance. And this is a about, it's a 64 inch cedar and you would be taken in 100 feet in this case. So right there is the formula for that. I'm not going to do that method today, partly because I don't have a good seed box and I couldn't figure out, well, there, I could get a tarp attached to it, um, but it is a little windy out and I'm afraid that I might get my seeds blown out if I'm trying to roll it across the ground and catch the seeds. So there is an alternative way this can be done as well. And that is to... They say for this model, you can actually turn the agitator shaft huh, 1,425 times. Um, and that is the shaft revolutions per acre. Now, I'm not going to turn it 1,425 times. Um, I'm going to do uh, probably an eighth of that, which is gonna come out to um, about 175-ish. I have the math actually figured out somewhere. Um, and what I'm gonna do there is, uh, I'll turn the agitator shaft and weigh the seed that come out. And uh, because we're gonna be scientific about this, I am going to do it a couple times and see how consistent the seed drop rate is so I know that it's gonna be an accurate measurement. So with that being said, I'll uh, show you a little bit of the anatomy and what has to be done here in order to do this for this particular cedar. From what I've seen, this looks quite similar to other brilliant cedars, but what we're saying here doesn't even necessarily go for a brilliant cedar. It can be done in general. Every cedar is going to have some kind of formula that you would use to measure out or multiply the weight of your seed, and then it's just a matter of plugging it in. But in terms of just collecting your seed so you can weigh it, this what I'm doing here is going to work for just about any type of cedar. On this particular cedar, there's a little clutch disengagement lever right here. And it pulls up and the it'll drop down inside there. That has a clutch engaged, which means as long as the front cultipackers are turning, then it is going to be turning their brushes inside as well. If I pull this up and disengage that, that means the brushes can turn freely inside 
and it's not going to make this whole chain turn. Next, I have a tarp stuck underneath there, but I just didn't, I just didn't put the tarp out all the way yet because I wanted you guys to be able to see the Colta Packers so you can kind of understand what type of equipment this is. So why don't we go ahead and just can pull the tarp out. Now I've got a little um, kind of valley in the tarp under here to catch all the seed. And for this tarp, I'm actually using a shower curtain. Looking inside the box, these are the agitator brushes inside. And this is going to spin as I turn the agitator shaft. And this is the seed adjustment, or the seed rate adjustment. I'm probably going to start it on one and see how far we get there. And then um, we'll go up from there if we need to. So the seed drops from uh, the agitator shaft into this little box here. I forget what they call this. And this is just a hollow little box that just drops it right in between the two Colta Packers. So the front Colta Packer, which you can't see because it's covered up, basically prepares the dirt and puts a little furrow in it. This drops it in there and then the rear Colta Packer kind of um, packs the seed into the ground and kind of packs the dirt back over the seed to some extent. Now the agitator brush shaft is right here. It's a square, um, it's a square shaft that comes out of there. And I use a metric 18 millimeter um, special socket that can basically work on any type of uh, bolt head, whether it be square, hex, um, star, so these are really nice to have and I'm just going to put that on there and now I'm going to spin this baby a whole bunch of times dropping my seat out. I'm going to have to keep track of how many times I spin it and then we're going to weigh it. Now the reason ryegrass makes a good frost seeding uh, seed is because the seeds are relatively large and heavy and they will get their way worked down to the soil easily and then get compacted into the soil by the repeated freeze and thaws. The co-op told me that orchard grass is a little too fluffy to frost seed effectively. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start dumping this seed in here by the cup. This costs about 175 bucks a bag. So I'm gonna be pretty careful and not wasting any. And I'm gonna make sure that I've got a pretty even distribution of seed completely across the agitator brushes. So we are not missing anything. So now I've got a little bit of grass in the bottom of here. And as I am turning the agitator brushes, I'll just be sure to keep an eye on this to make sure I'm not running out. So what I did was I took 1,425 shaft revolutions per acre and divided, I divided that by 16, which is going to give me 89 revolutions. So I'm going to turn the shaft here um, counterclockwise. So like I'm loosening a bolt basically. 89 turns and then I'm going to collect the grass seed in here, I'm going to weigh it, and then I would measure that by 16 to see what um, my seeding rate per acre would be. But before I do that, I'm first I'm first going to set this to one, I actually set it to one half, and uh, I've determined that by the very edge of this is right at the one half tick mark on there. So we'll see what one half gives us. It's a pretty small hole. It's probably gonna be too, 
too small for this, but let's see. I just completed 89 revolutions and now I'm just kind of looking over the spread of the seed in there. Can't hold the camera very still. To make sure it all looks fairly uniform and even. This one looks like it might be dropping it just a little thin in that spot, but it looks fairly uniform everywhere else. So. I'm going to weigh this. To do that, I'm just going to put it in a solo cup very carefully. I'm going to tear my cup first, and that's T-A-R-E, meaning I'm going to take just the weight of the cup on the scale, and then we're going to see how much we've got here. This is all the seed I've collected from 89 Revolutions. Now, if I'm supposed to have 30 pounds of that, if I were to multiply this by 16, it looks like it's probably going to be a little light, so let's see what I end up with. Okay, so my empty cup weighed 9 grams. I only had two cups out here, and I was too lazy to run back into the house. So the first cup weighs 174 grams. I'm just going to write that down over here. And then the second cup weighs 100, let's, let's tear that out all the way. The second cup weighs 115 grams. So if we do a little bit of math here, the first cup had 174 grams of seed the second cup had 115 grams of seed. That gives us a total of 289 grams minus nine grams tear weight for each cup. So that's 18 total, gives us a total of 271 grams times our multiplication factor of 16. Because if you recall, we turned 89 revolutions, which was 1 16th the amount of revolutions that the shaft would turn in a full acre gives us 4,336 grams, which is equal to 9.56 pounds. So what I'm doing is this was, this was set on um, with the seed drop door open at setting one half. So I have opened it to one and a half and it'll just be curious to see if that gives us approximately three times the drop rate because recall, I do want to seed this at about 30 pounds per acre for frost seeding. So I'm gonna open it up to 1.5 for the seed drop rate. I'm gonna go another 89 revolutions and we're gonna measure out what we get. So with the seed drop set to about 1.5, you can see our pile got a lot bigger. I think that's more than three times what we had before. So we probably overshot because that's quite a lot. So I'm gonna start weighing out and seeing what we got. With our setting at 1.5, this came out pretty interesting. So as you can see, we had a large pile and we ended up with 2,173 grams of seed. These are already subtracted uh, the weight of the cup. Multiply that by 16 gives us 34,768, which is 76.65 pounds per acre. So we way overshot that. I'm going to dial it back to one and we're gonna see what we get with that. Now here's with our door, our seed drop door set at one. So this is looking a little better. I'm a little more optimistic. It, I think it'll be pretty close. Let's check it out. Taking another stab with our seed drop door set at one, we had a total of 734 grams of seed. Multiply it by our 16. Our factor of 16 gives us 11,744, which equals 25.9, almost 26 pounds per acre. Our target was 30, so I think the door um, open at setting one is gonna give us just about 26, 
and I think that's about going to be our optimal for what we're going to seed. Now I think I might try doing this one more time just to see how repeatable this number is, and let's check out what we get. All right, well, I just took another measurement, and so this is quite impressive. It's extremely repeatable. If you recall, the first time at setting one, we got 734 grams. This time I ended up with 750 grams. Multiply that by our uh, factor of 16 gives me 12,000 grams compared to 11,744 before. We end up with 26, about, just about 26 and a half pounds this time. And we had almost 26 pounds the first time. So 25.89 and 26.46, that to me, given uh, all the more simple this machine is, is quite precise and, and pretty accurate and repeatable. I'm quite impressed. So therefore, I think for the purposes of this, our setting is going to be one, and that's going to give me right about an average of 26 pounds per acre. Now I'm just going to roll some footage so you can see exactly what this machine looks like since it was kind of covered up before. Here I've got a little bit of grass seed left in there, which I will store in there until we go to plant. And then this just hooks onto the three point of my tractor with two sets of Colta Packers. Very simple machine, just driven by the ground. And the action of the front Colta Packer attached to a sprocket, which turns that chain, which turns the feed metering shaft right there. Uh, the back Colta Packer is just free floating. It just drives on its own. It's not actually connected to anything that's driving any other mechanism on the machine. Well, I think that's a wrap and I'm pretty satisfied with how well we've got this dialed in. I know what I need to do and stay tuned because one of the next videos coming up is when we are actually seeding this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.